how do you keep your relationship not boring, especially before marriage? So I guess what are some things that we do to keep our relationship? (laughs) We be having fun, y'all. We do. Honestly, we 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 have fun. Marry someone you can laugh with. Yeah, honestly, Mm -hmm. if 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 we didn't have that, bro, like just the craziness, the stress of life would would have taken (laughs) taken. Yeah, we have fun. Like we stay joking. Yep. We watch. You know, even when we're watching TV, we're roasting whoever's on the TV. We're laughing, rolling. You know, and. You know, we, we, we just try to, you know, do date nights every every week. So sometimes, you know, we do, sometimes we don't. But uh, most of the time we're doing a date night uh, mm-hmm. on the weekend. Um, and then we're always going to events. Some kind of events, yeah. Dallas. Uh, we're kind of in the middle mm-hmm. where we're located. So, you know, if something in Houston, something dies, sometimes we go to Austin. We got right. some friends out there. And, mm-hmm. you know, we just try to show our faces be present Mm -hmm. yeah and also i like i love adventure so i am like the let's go do this woo kind of person and he's like babe just make sure you're safe and you know make sure this and i'm like come on so like i in the past i've tried to get him out out of his comfort zone by like doing things like zip lining over like this major thousands of feet zip line um or we'll just you know do things like when we went to tulum we literally he swam with bats i did it (laughs) but he did and that's so unlike him because i'm usually the whoa let's do it and he was like swimming with with bats and i'm like okay so just keeping it keeping it exciting and doing things that are different to you, out of your comfort zone, even. Um, one of our my other things was like I was even thinking like, oh, I want I want us to do go take dancing classes because that would be fun, like salsa dancing, you know. So just little things like that that are out of like you know your norm, right. just to keep things fun and keep things you know exciting, and also just having new experiences together. That's really the fun part about it, you know, like being able to to go to Tulum and swim in the um, cenotes. It's like wow that's that's such an experience that i probably wouldn't have gotten if i really i mean i probably would have but it's just nice to have gotten it with someone that i love so yeah just doing things that are out of your comfort zone or in your comfort zone that you can enjoy with your significant other so that's one thing that i would say and then and then also get married friends that are fun too you know Mm -hmm. shout out to the north shout out to so many couples Mm -hmm. all of them you know we have a good time with so yeah we, we try to definitely include that as well mm-hmm. okay, let's see, let's see. so no go for it okay do you, did you both agree simultaneously that you were supposed to marry each other it's a good question mm-hmm. i i mean hmm. i i feel like i feel like i knew that yinka wanted to marry but yes i did Oh, I, yeah, you knew I wanted to marry you. Right, right, right. That was right. the point where you started, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> asking questions. I was like, what? Because marriage is... I thought you liked Marriage me. is serious. <laughs> marriage is not, like, a joke. So, to me, I kind of got cold feet at a certain point. And, you know, there are other reasons why I got cold feet. Because, like I said, we were best friends. Like, we were very, very good friends. And a part of me was scared because of something that had happened with another friend who was going through all these marital issues because she married her best friend but had no physical attraction to that person. So it scared me because I was like, when she said we're, they're best friends, I was like, oh, is that happening to me? But the uh, but the only the only reassuring part of it was that no, I'm actually attracted to him and I actually you know want him in my bed or whatever. <laughs> um, so you know it was different. It was still different. So I think I did get cold feet because marriage is very serious. Like marriage is not just something you just jump into like whoa, this is so much fun. It's like no, like think about it, you know. Um, and you know it's easy to just think marriage is just something you jump into because Instagram pictures and just like the cute reels and stuff and that's all great. But it it is a commitment. Marriage is a commitment. So I think I knew he wanted to marry me and I wanted to marry him. But I think towards as we got closer and closer to like actually making it official, it was just so scary. Like I was like, oh, my gosh, we're really doing this. And then now we're here. And I'm like, she, she oh. know, I was serious. Like I was, I'm for real. He for was real. dead serious. <laughs> he was dead serious about getting married. OK, let's see. Um, okay, so 
Any advice on finding other married friends? We feel alone out here. Yeah, no, um, I would say my advice would, you know, be to get get yourself in places where married couples would be, you mm-hmm. know. So if it's if it's a, a you know young popping church or mm-hmm. a church where they they have married couples, you know, just get yourself involved and 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 be uncomfortable. You know, one right. thing about most of our married friends is she's initiated all of them. I'm such an because, extrovert. <laughs> because she she gets out of the comfort zone. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Oh, what if we're you know. What if yeah. they don't want to talk to us? She just goes for it, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And we've had some of our, our, our best friends in this season just, just yeah. from her reaching out uh, yeah. to people. So, you know, just just don't be afraid to get out your comfort zone. They, yeah. Don't be afraid to reach out to a couple on social media. If you see right. a couple on social media, you rock with. And they live and, near you. And they live near you. Yeah. And they, um, you know, shoot your shot. Right. You know? Why yeah. not? And if they don't respond, then cool. Keep it moving. Go on to the next, but right. I mean, there's, there's a plethora of, of great of, couples out absolutely, here. Absolutely, absolutely. Just a of sometimes just connecting. I agree. I agree 100. Mm-hmm. Um, percent Like he said, getting uncomfortable. Like it's not fun. Trust me, it is scary. Like reaching out to a couple or or not even a couple, an individual. Like, let's say the wife, right? For me, um, and saying, hey, you know, because it's like, what if they say no? What if they say they don't want to be friends with me? But for the most part, you know. In the last year, two of the friends that I reached out to first initially initiated the contact. They're some of our closest couple friends now. So I would say, like, to shoot that shot, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I have had experiences where I'm like, ooh, they didn't really take this well. Or just, mm-hmm. I was just really hurt because, like, they, did, they didn't really, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, it didn't feel mutual. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, when it does work, it's, it's an amazing feeling. And it's like, yeah. wow, I'm so glad I took that leap of faith and just right. reached out to this person. Because at the end of the day, you need community, right? right. You need friendships that um, you cannot feel so alone in because you're the only one going through that individual mm-hmm. season. So I, I think that that is definitely one. Who said I love you first? <laughs> yeah he literally said it like at the end of some phone call i love you and i'm like whoa uh, 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 uh. go back go back i need you to i need to enunciate i love you like i want to hear them okay i want to hear all the okay let's see okay let's see um how did you okay we answered that one um, which Ooh. Okay, I like this one. What was your biggest challenge to overcome in preparing for marriage? That's a really good one. Go ahead, sis. Um, so I like <laughs> <laughs> So I feel like my biggest challenge in preparing for marriage was not realizing how much my unresolved childhood you know trauma or issues would come up like during the process of that road to marriage i didn't it's it's so crazy because so much does not come out of you until you're joined with another person so closely like it it amazes me like how much you don't know these things are in you until someone is close enough to you to recognize and to bring those things out of you so for me I mean, it was just such a journey of like, literally, I would, I started going to therapy in during my senior year of college when we met, <laughs> not because of him, but because of some things that I needed to work through and resolve. And, um, I had literally, I've been in therapy since then. Like, it's just kind of this process of like me finding my own healing, me finding my own journey. So just realizing the impact your childhood could have on you in relation to your marriage like there's so much unresolved you know issues or trauma or just conversations that need to be had that if you do not have them you will project onto your spouse like the, either your spouse or you will project in- internally and it'll still come out microaggressively so to me that wasn't expected i thought i was going to be this perfect wife never gets upset food's always hot and ready you know, everything is perfect. Come to find out I'm human. <laughs> I am a human being. Yeah. Um, and there's there's grace for that. There's room in a marriage to to push past our differences and to love each other unconditionally because 
we, we're here to make this work. We're right. here to fight for for healing and growth and longevity in our marriage. Right, right, right. Um, so that wasn't expected. The childhood trauma resurfacing. Um, you may even think like, oh, I didn't, I didn't experience anything. And then you start twitching. Once you, you, you get married, you start twitching. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, yes, yeah, it's coming out. It's, it's, it's being re-triggered. Right. You know, it's, it's, yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, your, your spouse really is like a mirror, you know, into your soul that, that you you didn't even and it and it's a mirror that shows you things that you thought you knew but you didn't know at all like mm -hmm. things that are in there that you could not see otherwise right. un unless the same person that you sleep with that you wake up with mm -hmm. that you eat with that you cry with that you laugh with and, and that level of intimacy it, it it forces things out of you right. that maybe you've learned how to hide maybe mm -hmm. you've learned how to like stuff down maybe you you know when you're when you're around friends you know what i'm saying you go home and you sleep in your bed right. you know what i'm saying <laughs> right. even even like different relationships you mm -hmm. know there's you're not going home and sleeping with this person and staying with this person all day every mm -hmm. day you know mm -hmm. like you still go home and, and get to do you and marriage Ain't no do you. No. Maybe Ain't you no might have you. little moments of do you, but it's all it's do us. Do us. You know, and and I think when you realize that, um, uh, and you realize that okay, what my partner is showing me is not necessarily for my harm, but God is using it for my good. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think for me, because stuff started coming outside of me, and I'm like, right. Jeez, she's she's the reason all this stuff come. I ain't never raised my voice. You know, I ain't never, no one ever made oh me yell. Oh my gosh. You know, but yeah. realizing, mm -hmm. okay, that's actually God using her to address things in me and little anger I had. I had learned how to, you know, mask, mask my anger, you know, and, and I'm a calm guy. I'm a chill guy. Yep. So no one, no one ever calls me angry like that. But I had some internal anger that I had to deal with. Mm -hmm. And she actually brought that out, out of me and I would have known it's there. That makes me a better man. Right. That makes me a better person. That makes me a better brother. That makes me a better uh, leader. That makes me a better all of those things. So really, when God uses your spouse to show mm -hmm. you those things that you didn't want to deal with or that you've pushed aside, it's a blessing, not a curse. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, Yinka would always say like, oh, this marriage is making me a better person. This marriage is making me a better man. And I absolutely agree that marriage, essentially, it definitely refines you. Um, if you do it well, right, you can let it destroy you, but it absolutely refines you if you allow it to in its proper context. Um, so yeah, I absolutely think that, you know, if I didn't meet Yinka, I would have had so much in me that I just didn't wasn't aware that was still needing to be worked on mm -hmm. but coming into marriage i think i think we sometimes also think that we have to be perfect or have to be where we mm -hmm. need to be to come into a marriage and that's not necessarily true mm -hmm. um i think you just have to be willing to do the hard work right you have to be willing to get your hands dirty mm -hmm. go dig deep open up be honest be vulnerable cry you know all that good right, stuff with right, your partner right. Because truly, at the end of the day, you, you are one and you are fighting to make this work. Like, right. what you already have so many things fighting against you as a couple. So, why, why, why add to that right. being yourselves or right. being individuals right. adding to that? And it's like when you don't do that work, you're only delaying the, the you're only delaying the, the, the progress and the purpose that you two can have, right? As, as a unit, like, man, I think one of the greatest things and the blessing is like early on me and crystal have had some really really hard conversation mm -hmm. and we've dealt with it like some couples may not deal with this stuff till like it's forced out you know right some couples don't deal with it until like the kids are done gone off to college and you're like i don't even know who this person this is, is. Mm -hmm. you know and and one thing you know even with us like we've just gotten to really know each other right we've gotten to really understand each other and we're choosing to keep doing that so mm -hmm. what's next so let's see so do you think we should do two more and then maybe do a part two yeah yeah, we can yeah. Do two more. so we're gonna do two more questions and then we're going to potentially do a part two um let us know if you want a part two i i'm enjoying this but if y'all like hate it we can stop <laughs> we can we can stop <laughs> um but let me let me pull up the the last two um, so let's see what traditions from your family did you bring into your marriage? 
I don't know. I feel like Nigerians. Do we have? Thre- do we do tradition? Let me think. Do we have? I mean, we do, but like, oh, it was so sweet. Yeah. So, like I said, I'm Igbo, and um, he's Yoruba, and there are different like custom traditional things that they do, like a naming ceremony. And Igbos, we don't really do that, but they do a naming ceremony. They do. Um, what else do you, do you guys do? They, uh, what else do they do? The dobale. Like the dobale. So, yeah. yeah. So, the gr- way, way to greet, we do dobale. The what else? Even like washing of the feet. Washing you know, of the feet. Mm hmm. Stuff like that. So, to me, like that was new to me because I'm Igbo and Igbos don't necessarily do those kind of traditions, but it was nice to like be a part of that with his family. So, of course, I would want to keep that in the family. Um, as it pertains to, you know, of course, greeting your elders in a manner that is respectful to the Yoruba tradition as well as the Igbo tradition. Um, Igbo tradition is just good evening, good morning. We just greet, you know. But the Yoruba is, you know, for women, you'll do dobale, and then men will actually, like, lay flat, right. like, or just touch the ground, you right. know. One thing I love about, like, the Igbo tradition, it's, like, very biblical. They're, like, when it comes to marriage, there's, like... You know, when we had our what's it called? Uh, Ibanku, like our. Mm-hmm. It's 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 so biblical because one, there is like the husband is bringing something like, hey, I can provide, and some people see it like, oh, are you buying a wife? You know, like <laughs> it's not that deep, bro. It's just just you know honor the tradition, honor mm-hmm. the culture. So you bring you no know, goods, you bring money, um, to just to show like, hey, I'm willing to provide for this woman, um, and then. You know, like, even when you look at it, like, that's, like, a coming together mm-hmm. of the marriage. So, what's called, like, a betrothal in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then when you have sex, that's the consummation of the marriage. So, like, the moment you, you two have sex, that's the official consummation. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, that's biblical. Like, mm-hmm. when you actually look at it in scripture, that's exactly how they did things. Right. So I love that about mm-hmm. the, the evil culture and hopefully c- continue yeah to do stuff like that yeah yeah one more so let's see we'll do one more and then we will plan to do another one since i did see some of you um did want part two yes part two so we will potentially do a part two um also yes this live will be saved on our igtv so you can also catch it there mm-hmm. yes and I see y'all showing love. We're trying to just stay on track. But mm-hmm. we love you guys. And yes. Thank you for joining here. and an- answering questions and just yeah. all the super encouraging comments. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Okay. All right. So let's answer one last question. I got like a really good question um, in my Insta story. And also it kind of ties into the how do y'all manage your finances. Okay. Um, another question that I was asked was... It looks like you both are really good with your money or your finances. Do you guys have debt? If so, how do you manage that as well as working with other things that you mm-hmm. you do? Yeah, no. Uh, look, that, so I went to Baylor University. Uh, anyone that's going to a private university knows that debt is real. <laughs> a real. Christian private university. Yeah, it's, it's, it's real. It's, it's, it's hefty. So, and then she also... So she had, for her undergrad... <laughs> She didn't have to any debt. At I all. didn't have any debt. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, for her master's program, she had some, and then for my master's program, most of it was uh, paid for, and then so so we do have uh, school debt for yes. sure. Student we're, loans, we're looking absolutely. To the that we pay uh, every month and trying to get that you know done with and and over with. Credit card debt is something. I mean, we we have just a little bit, it's but minimal. It's, it's very yeah. minimal. It's like two hundred dollars. Like yeah, it's, it's it's very minimal. Stuff will, you know, yeah, just pay off as we can. Mm-hmm. Every month. But um, and I we always strive to keep that very low. Like we never want to get to a point where we're like yeah, swimming we're, in credit we're not, card we're debt. We're not big credit card. People. No, we're not we big credit card we people. Don't, um, nah. Use it. We don't buy large we purchases. Typically, cash and carry is typically right. how we work for the. And he is very cash and carry, so. That kind of helps my mindset with, okay, if, right. if you afford it, like, you have to just buy the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. So, we try not to do that. But, yeah, that's good and long. Y'all pray for us. We're trying, <laughs> to, we're trying to get that knocked out. We are. We're, uh, we're just, yeah. So, we're yeah, figuring that out. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 
especially being that we went to a private school, I don't even think we qualify for a lot of like recovery, like low debt hey, recovery. Hey, you guys go and message uh, Joe Biden. <laughs> right Tell now. him to help. Tell Uncle Joe <laughs> to we need him to come through. LOL. These, uh, but I don't think we would. It would count for us. Babe. I, I don't care. I need Uncle Joe to come through for <laughs> to all just these help. Moves, so. Oh gosh. Yeah, but but yeah. yeah. So I mean, the finances. Yinka's the budget guy. He's the guy who keeps us on track with you know our goals financially. He's the one who spearheads our second property um, as landlords. He really just takes a very, very um, front seat um, charge role in that. And I appreciate him so much for that because I, it's a lot. It's a lot to be a landlord. And I, I really respect him for being able to, you know, do that hard work and to just, yeah, just learn, learn the curves of all of it. I'm more so the aesthetic kind of person. Like, I'll make it look nice and I'll give it vision. <laughs> <laughs> but that's about it, <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> and i it, mean it matters yeah yeah no it does and i was like oh we should give them. we should give our new tenant a chick-fil-a gift card just to thank them for you know just mm -hmm. stuff like that um but he definitely is the money guy um good and bad because i'm like why are you leave me alone i want to <laughs> spend my money and he's like Bang. he's like the money police but <laughs> For the most part, it comes in handy because we do get to enjoy things like traveling. We do get to enjoy things like, um, you know, spending on things that we are needing, whether it be a new laptop or just whatever that might look like. But we are definitely um, thinking more in the future of that generational wealth and how to build that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we are, like we said, we're just getting started. Um, we are looking to do more in the future um and i think that's basically with finances i don't think we have we we are we have a budget but the budget it just be it be changing y'all <laughs> it be moving around our budget be just it be changing sometimes because of me and i think we we just need the you know we just need the tightness of it but for the most part, I think that nonetheless, we don't like go over exponentially. I think a lot of it came from last year being, you know, the home that we purchased and the second home that we purchased. It's just, it can add up. So, right, right, right. but yeah, um, let's see. Let's save it. Let's, let's save, save it. it. Yeah. Right. Okay. If you, guys, if you guys have questions that haven't been answered, uh, I think we've been on here for about an hour. Mm -hmm. But if you guys have questions that, you know, haven't been answered, Hit us up in the DMs. Yeah, um, and we'll save them for we'll the next live. We'll save them for the next live. We're going to do a part two. Mm -hmm. I don't know when. I don't know when either. We'll definitely be yeah. here again mm -hmm. and try to answer some more questions. Yeah, stay tuned for my IG stories. I'll probably post it on there um, when I'm doing the live, or I might post it on my main page. So just turn on notifications for that, and you should get alerted whenever we do do that. Um, someone said, thank you so much, Crystal and Yinka. I learned a lot from this Q&A session. Thank you so much for joining. I'm so glad we were able to share and that you were able to learn something from us. Mm -hmm. We're not experts by any means. We are just sharing our lived experience and hoping that it connects with someone out there right. and gives them hope and encourages them. That's so right. thank you so much for joining. Uh, this live will be saved. Um, he, Yinka will have his saved on his page. I will have mine saved on mine. Um, yes, we love you right back. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, super appreciative. And you guys have an amazing night. All right, y'all. Peace. Bye. Good night.